And a very warm welcome to yet another week with Mel and Jen, Jennifer Baxter in Antibes in France. How are you doing today? I'm really well, Melanie Walker. And hello. And who do you have with you there? Well, I'm going to I'm going to let her introduce herself. Obviously, a South African sitting next <laughs> to me right now. And this is actually quite exciting because this is somebody who's going to be doing uh, her own YouTube channel and podcast. So please introduce yourself and tell us all about what you do. Jenny Baxter, hi. Thank you both for having me on Mel and Jenny. I'm <laughs> Carrie Adams. And most people in the wine industry know who I am, in the booze industry, actually. But um, I've worked for 35 years here and overseas in the wine industry, whiskey, brandy, spirits, retail, distribution, you name it. I, I love, I love was going to say I love booze, but I don't <laughs> love booze. She's I a dipsomania. <laughs> <laughs> I love the art and craft of, of alcohol, and that's sort of what I've focused my life on. But whilst I've done that, and I'm sort of semi-retired at this stage of the game, I have always loved broadcasting. And I've had a radio show, I had a radio program for... 22 odd years with Prime Media. I then worked for eight or nine years with Classic FM, mm -hmm. where we had my own wine show. And then I did a bit of work with Biz News, and that's where I, I met Solid Gold yeah. and the Kennedys, who are addictive when it comes to their enthusiasm about podcasts. And I'm a technophobe. I'm a Technosaurus Rex. <laughs> I know nothing about any of this that we're doing. Um, but but you, it's exciting. And I think it's 21st century and it's time to sort of move along and move away from radio broadcasting and do some YouTube channels and some podcasts. And so what will your YouTube channel be about? Will it be about wine, whiskey, beer? Will it have other things as well? Yeah, so it's going to be called Carrie's Connoisseurs because it's, there's so much that goes together with booze there's food there's cigars there's nice parties like yeah everything nice in your mouth really so, <laughs> so we're gonna Except do the words i'm gonna put into her mouth <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it's gonna be and just over the years i've had the privilege because i've met a million people in this industry and i've had the privilege of being able to interview chef de calves from champagne and whiskey masters from scotland and you name it so yeah, it's going to be everything booze. So and it's food. not just it's not just limited to things that are South African. It's from no. around the world, from everywhere. And anybody who's got anything that they think might be a good a good idea is very welcome to tell you the boss. I, I, I do um, the whiskey side of things. I mean, I've done. I've had to go and sit one night and eat haggis and drink whiskey and do the lassies retort. So the I'm Robert like, Burns like, evening. The Robert Burns evening. So maybe I should come and do a Lassie's retort on her show sometime. But she's been doing something very interesting in the last couple of days with Diners Club. Yes. So Diners Club, I've worked with Diners Club for about 16 or 17 years, and they are very big supporters of the South African wine industry. In fact, I think they run that as the longest standing um, competition in the country that continues to be supported by the same sponsor. So Diners Club do the Winemaker of the Year and the Young Winemaker of the Year awards. And they select a different category every year. And we judge the whole thing blind. I always say it's the, only, it's the only profession in the whole world where you're not allowed to know what you're doing. And if you get the answer wrong, you're an asshole. <laughs> no, if you don't like the taste of something, then you don't like it. It's also good to have personal preference. I mean, it's like the intelligent it's profiling thing. Imagine if I took... If I took Alan Pick from the butcher shop mm -hmm. and I put 25 steaks in front of him and I said to him, now, Alan, I need you to tell me where this rump came from, what color was the cow, how old was the cow, where did the cow live, what did the cow eat? And you don't get it right. And then they say, oh, you must well, go to Alan Pick's place. You don't know what you're place. talking about. Yeah. Place. He doesn't, doesn't know, know what he's talking about. Food, yeah. <laughs> so that's the world I live in. Anyway, Diamond's okay. Club, it's a fabulous competition and the winemaker of the year it's a big price like a hundred thousand rand and a trip to any wine producing area in the world paid for by diners club to a winery 
to go and do a vintage or a something at the winery. Mm. And the young winemaker gets the same. I think he just gets 50,000 rand and not 100,000 rand, something like that. But it's just wonderful. They get, um, obviously, Diners Club promotes them throughout the year. The wines are used by Diners Club for all their eventing and functioning around the world for the whole year. So it's really a meaningful sort of a competition. And we've just handed out the awards on Saturday night down at Arabella in Hermanus. Mm -hmm. Oh, Arabella's lovely. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Conrad Flock. Mm -hmm got the winemaker of the year. He is from Strandfeld, yeah. which is close to my heart. I was one of the founder owners of Strandfeld. Um, I am no longer an owner of Strandfeld. I haven't been for seven or eight years. But he won it, and it was very gratifying because we planted those very first vineyards. Mm -hmm. And um, now my COVID brain's clicking, and I can't <laughs> remember the... <laughs> Who's the young winemaker? <laughs> And, and for, for South Africans who live abroad, who go home to South Africa, what are like the new places that they should visit, the, the, the wineries? Do you know? You no, know, Jenny, there's so many. There's been quite a big revolution in the South African wine industry. And Mel and I were talking about it earlier. There's a wonderful sort of organic growth that's starting to happen in our industry. Um, and a lot of the, what used to be, what we used to knew when we were in you know, varsity, you know, there's big co-ops. Yeah. So there was the Swartland co-op, mm. which we could buy five liters of Swartland dry red when I was at Fitz. For like six rand or something. <laughs> You're giving your age away. And it was damn delicious. I can tell you that much. It was really, really, really delicious yeah. stuff. It now happens to be all of those producers that supplied the Swartland cooperative are now all these Swartland sort of their own little farm. revolutionaries the and farms, they yeah. and they are causing a big storm mm. all over the world because the fruit's gorgeous it's a specific area it's, it makes lovely dense rich perfumey gorgeous shirazes and mm. yummy honey chenins and things so swartland is big and that i think we can thank all those those sort of eco warriors from the swartland they've done all of that but more than that, there's been some serious investment from, from what I call my checkbook wine farmers, and they've been amazing. They really have poured money into the South African mm. wine industry. And, and who are they? Mr. Rupert, so the, Johan Rupert's done it, uh, Jesse Ferreira's done it, Wendy Applebaum's done it, uh, Lawrence Kraft's done it, Dele Kraft, you know, um, mm. uh, De Villiers Craft from De Grendel. So a lot of people who have put their money where their mouths are. And um, they've, they've poured money into the industry. There's a lot of education going on. And there's fabulous wine coming out of South Africa. But that's the nice thing is that you've got all the youngsters who are getting yeah. into it now. It's become a, almost like a trendy thing to actually make your own wine. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot of little what I call cuckoos. You know, Neil Ellis was the first cuckoo winemaker. He's the first guy who didn't have a farm. And he didn't have a cellar. And he took a sort of a French approach to it. As you know, there's lots of growers and things, and then people go and buy the grapes and they make the yeah. wine somewhere else. Nearly listed that, and he was a cuckoo winemaker. And everybody thought, how can we take this guy seriously? He doesn't have his own <laughs> farm and he doesn't have his own cellar. But he did. And, and now there are a lot more, as you say, those little boutique mm, winemakers mm. who go and they see a patch of Sinso. And they say, I'm going to look after that for the next 12 months. I'm going to harvest. I'm going to vinify. I'm going to make it as if it were my own. But they don't actually own the land. But it's giving them the opportunity to express themselves through yeah. the wine. It's lovely. So the young winemakers are coming through like very, very strongly, which is great. Because, I mean, it is something I think people are always going to drink. It's not a, a flash in the pan thing where everybody's like, oh, this is the latest thing. We must all now mm. make um, a specific type of craft gin. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Although they do tend to do that. We sort of coming apart at the seams that we've got so many craft gins, but I mean, who doesn't want a gin and tonic at the end of the day? I, give me just a plain gin hey, and tonic. Even at the fine. beginning of the day. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the day is even better. But, um, yeah, so for Jenny, I mean, she's sitting over there. We, we do discuss wine every now and then, especially when there's happenings um, across the world or like, you know, South Africans are doing well. And there's a lot of people, though, that they'll go overseas and even South Africans living overseas say, oh, well, the South African wines just aren't that good, you know. <laughs> and I'm sitting here and thinking, in fact, I think the South African wines are better than anything else I can get over there. 
But but Mal, how many? I, I mean, I agree the South African wines are lovely. But how many other wines are you tasting? You know, when last did you taste wine from New Zealand, from France? Ooh. Do you know what I mean? Oui, every does. day. Yeah, I start does. at nine o'clock in the morning, and I'm still tasting at nine o'clock at night. <laughs> No, I That's the wine. In my job, I taste a lot. And, and listen, we do make some lovely wine. We also make some rubbish stuff, but so does yeah. everybody. I but know, but only the rubbish Tussies. stuff Come wasn't. On. Oh, Tussies. Tussies is always going to be the, Do you remember Tussies, Jenny? No. Tussenberg. <laughs> I am I'm a Francophile because I studied overseas in England, and I cut my teeth, really. I went straight from autumn harvest crackling to... I had a fascinating mentor mm. of a boss in London when I was working there. And I went straight from Autumn Harvest Crackling to Chateau Lafitte. Um, he taught me how to, and, it, and that's what really sparked my interest in wine, yeah. uh, was what yeah. I was doing there. So I'm very Francophilian. I love yeah. France, and I love you it. Know, you know, here what happened is we have some South African friends who got a house near Montpellier and and here at the end of the wine season you can that you can just go into the field you don't even have to pay just anything that's left over you can take home any of the grapes as long as you pick them yourself you know <laughs> and and so they did that and the husband you know Alan he stomped on those wine uh, on those grapes all night long stirring they did the whole thing and actually it was it was so divine and now it's a few years later and they actually have bought a little their oh, own little pot of a vineyard yeah so where so do they you would say, where do you stay in france i'm Is i'm in the Antibes? south um between Cannes and nice in a place called antibes but I know um Oh, really? Oh, well, you must visit you next time. You drink lots of rosé. Lots of rosé because of the sunshine here, you know. It's, so we do start pretty early because <laughs> you're <laughs> drinking you see, in the sun. I know. I can get all these <laughs> terrible secrets out of everybody. They, they say, oh, no, they could never have my job. And by the time I'm finished speaking to them, they say, well, the other morning, Somebody came to see me and we opened a bottle of such and such. And I said, you see, we all start early. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, you say talk, like in England, you learn about it in England. And I worked in a wine bar in England, although I think we were only serving plonk, to be honest. I know that there was some pretty good wine. You were asking whether I drank it. So, yes, I used to drink a lot of it when I lived in England. No, but that was long but ago. the English don't make wine. Okay. So how would the English know? Let's oh, that. <laughs> now I'm going to say no, but they do make wine. They do make they wine. Make amazing wine at the stage. The English are making wine? Yeah. The English are starting to make bubbly. They're making some of the nicest fizz in the world, and it's very expensive. But if you have a look at, if you have a look at England, it's on the same latitude mm -hmm. as Champagne in certain parts of it. So in Kent, down in the southern part of England, really, they, they, Gary Jordan from Jordan Winery, yeah. he's bought the most gorgeous farm okay. in Hampshire, Surrey. I don't know where he is. It's called Mass. Mouse House or Mouse Hall. Oh, I did see you. Yeah. 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 We talked about it, didn't we? He's going to make money yeah. and hmm. you'll see. Mal, Mal hasn't been to visit for a long time, so I think it's time that Mal I, I think it's time I, I got my, my butt overseas again. <laughs> I mean, the, the whole thing is, is that I, I think of England and I think of Perry. I love Perry. You know, the... The, if, for people who don't know what Perry is, there's a thing called Google. <laughs> you, Google is your friend. No, I'm joking. It's, it's a lovely sparkling pear wine. Yeah, it's like um, a cider. Scrumpy. Yeah, cider. It's like a sparkling I mean, I think cider. cider. I think beer. Um, well, even beer, I think more Germany. But for England, it's always been scrumpy. Elderflower wine, which is what my oh, grandfather gorgeous. used to make. Okay, so yeah. I think about that. I don't think of them as being a wine producing country. Uh, it's quite new, but they are really. We sit up and watch. There's going to be some really, really stuff. nice stuff coming out of it. But of course, you England is in the news at the moment because um, King Charles III has just had his first state visit from no other than our esteemed president here in South Africa. Yes. Cyril Ramaphosa has been playing with the royalty over in England. Yeah. I've just, I've just loved seeing the photos. Did you see the photo last night? Oh, and the video where um, Ramaphosa was at the banquet and mm -hmm. he toasted uh, King Charles and then sort of turned around and wasn't sure what to do and then him and Kate toasted. And just the most beautiful smiles on both their faces. I think he's like really got on well with them. We've, we've Who wouldn't got... get on well with Kate? She's gorgeous. Yeah. She just well, in a bottle, that girl. She's really lovely. 
Yeah, and I could see there's like this one photo where you can just see he's making her and and William just laugh, and another uh, some other photos where him and King Charles are just like killing themselves laughing. So he's definitely, um, you know, got into their hearts, and and uh, and Charles just said a lovely, lovely thing about how uh, you know his mother was in Cape Town in 1947 when she pledged to um, serve the Commonwealth for the rest of her life. And he said, you know, it's just so fitting that his first official state visit is hosting South Africa. Oh, that's lovely. Actually, yeah. lovely to me. I, you know, I, I have a bit of a soft spot for Cyril. I mean, I know there's always this bad press that's going on. And, of course, there's a whole bunch of elections happening here in South Africa at the moment. But he's still, he's still winning that race. Yeah, yes, by, by, by a long mile, way, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is a good thing because some of the other, <clears throat> the other people who are being put forward, yeah. I'm sitting there looking at yeah. this and just thinking, uh-uh. Wena? Yeah. Uh -uh. I call Wena. <laughs> I Anyhow, but I mean, England, as I said, in the news, of course, the Boca are going to be playing there this weekend. On and hopefully, Saturday. hopefully they repeat what they did this past weekend. Are I they think, playing England or Wales England. or Scotland? England. England. They're playing England, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so actually right. Ramaphosa said that as well last night. He's, you know, they, because they, they want to do a lot more England and South Africa together, not only financial stuff, but also sports and arts and everything. Um, and, then, and then President Ramaphosa said, yeah, but I'm not going to talk about sport with you, King Charles, <laughs> because we've got the big match coming up on Saturday. Yeah, we'll talk about it after. after we've beaten you, then we can yeah. talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll have to find the right bottle of wine to drink while we all watch that game. No, man, which would think, which yeah. would be the best well, in your because, opinion? You any, because you can't drink anything where the the soccer World Cup's happening at the moment. <laughs> so we'll have to do all the yes, drinking for Yes, that's them. been a little bit controversial, yeah. hasn't it? Yeah. Apparently, they yeah. sent all the Budweiser back. Budweiser being one of the biggest sponsors ever. I remember when we hosted the World Cup. Mm. Yeah, Budweiser spent set hundreds and thousands of bottles of Bud here. Nobody in South Africa drinks Budweiser, but you know, I would imagine the World Cup people should sort all of this out before the yeah. World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Eh? What would you say? Absolutely. So they're and, and, going to the World Cup this year. No, they they're not. We oh, they, they, <laughs> they did not qualify. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm a rugby girl. My blood is green. Okay? I don't know. <laughs> they didn't qualify. However, uh, you can still watch it on Showmax Pro, and they've got an incredible deal on until January, uh, although the World Cup ends on the 18th of December. But um, it's like half price, so it's really worth it because you get other sports as well, Mel. So mm -hmm. you'll get your Tour de France and everything. But uh, I think, I think, let me not say that for definite. But the World Cup itself has just is, is really worth watching because there are other African countries. Plus, like yesterday, history was made when, yeah. you know, it's been 72 years since there's been such a shock with um, Saudi Arabia beating Argentina. I know, that was absolutely And Argentina phenomenal. were like the favorite. <laughs> <right? laughs> they must have cheated. <laughs> How did that happen? <laughs> I'm sure oh, Benji that would have been pulled up very quickly. <laughs> yeah, the world we live in today. Go to your bedroom My and God. don't come out again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Jen, what, what news have you got for expats at the moment? What's, what's happening on SA People? Well, I just saw something really funny, you know, with you guys saying sort of you can't start drinking just yet at 8 in the morning, whatever. Um, old uh, Skalk Bezadenate, you know, the comedian yeah. um, who got us through lockdown, he is in New Zealand at the moment because he obviously made a lot of fans during, during lockdown. And um, so he's touring there till the end of the month, but he just arrived and he's got a show right now, this minute, and he said that he actually feels like he's going on stage at eight in the morning like he just <laughs> because he's, he's got still in New Zealand <laughs> yeah he's, he's on South African time you know so so yeah but so that's really good so if you're in New Zealand look out for Skulk um, we've obviously got the rugby oh, and then if you're in Paris until the 27th of November there's two stunning South African female artists who are doing this exhibition together it's called Eclipse and um, and I've seen the art. It's it's beautiful. Um, it's sort of 
our greatest desires, our greatest fears. Uh, so that whole eclipse thing comes in, you know, where you're looking into the the deep depths and, and who we hide, from, you know, who we really are that we hide from the world. But colorful, wonderful art. What's um, the medium? Oils, watercolors, it's, water. Yes, yes, watercolors and and actually there's a lithography, lithograph, mm. from Jean Michel Basquet. I can't pronounce his Basquet. name. Basquet. Basquet. Yeah. yeah, there there are a few of his unique pieces that are there at the same time. Um, it's in the seventh arrondissement at um, Galerie Artismania. So okay, head so on there if you're in Paris. Come over to the dark side. <laughs> we, have we have wine. We have wine and cookies. <laughs> and and cookies. cookies. And there was a huge eclipse, I think, on the 11th of November. Mm. New portals opening, all kinds of weird things yeah. happening. Ooh. Yeah. No, it was, <laughs> What's happening and, and, for Christmas? I'm a big Christmas feed. What's happening in London and Paris? And everywhere? We get well, no you, Christmas spirit here. You've got to well, keep I was in, in SAPeople.com. Well, that's com. the thing. Yeah. yeah. I was in Paris la, what, like 10 days ago about? Two weeks ago, and mm. um, and and you know all the shop windows get done, oh, and sorry. oh the Louis Vuitton one, you just want to live mm. in the window, you know. I speak about that. I see that Verve Clico have. Have Sorry, I'm having crossed. a moment. No, no, she's living she's in a just it's not Amsterdam, okay? She, <laughs> <laughs> you can't live in a shop Louis window. Vuitton, I can only do the window in Louis Vuitton. I can't go in and buy. But I see that Verve Kiko have made a deal with Smeg, the French mm -hmm. people, and they've made a beautiful Smeg Verve Kiko fridge for Christmas. <gasps> and it oh, costs, it's got a wine cooler. It costs, no, it's a proper French fridge, but it's bright yellow like Verve Kiko mm -hmm. is. And you get 70 bottles of Verve Clico inside the fridge. <laughs> that makes it all worth it. It's like 90,000 Rand or something to buy the fridge and the Verve fridge. Clico. But yeah. it's a beautiful sort of um, limited edition Verve Clico Smeg. And I think Amazing. you can buy them around the world. Listen, the only wine cooler I've got is this one over here, but it is hiding <laughs> the six pack underneath. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's six all pack is one. Says Mel pointing at her tummy. And, <laughs> um, and out of interest, I've noticed in the last couple of years this real increase in interest in Prosecco. And, right. um, oh, and, right. and around here, and there's just been this huge trend of everybody drinking Aperol Spritz. Is it, is it the same in South Africa? Yeah, yeah it's, exactly Aperol is huge. And quite frankly, I don't like it at all. Um, I'm I not big I on Aperol either. No. But I'll tell you something. Maybe like, you've got to sit on the beach to drink it because I've been falling in love. No, it depends on who you, you know what, it's who you're drinking it with as mm. well. Yeah. If you've got some gorgeous creature on a beach and a whatever, you can drink Turpentine, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I had some lunch with George and Georgia Dalicia. You'll remember Georgia Dalicia. He was the winemaker at Mirlust yes. for 150,000 years. And his son, George, now makes Dalicia wine. And I, when I was in Cape Town on the weekend, I, had some, I stopped and had some lunch with George and Georgia and George's wife. And they have made a Prosecco. Oh. Called got COVID brain. Georgia's. Oh, okay. but so, so what is it's called Bulicante because, you know, they're very, they're very Italian. Yeah. Yeah. And they've made Bulicante and the label is so cool. What he's done is he's taken all the Pantones from the labels that he and his father have put yes. together for the last 50 years and he's made little dots of all those Pantones. The Pantone colors. And it's just a, a dotty label. It's very festive. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's highly drinkable. It's not hugely expensive. So that's a good tip for Christmas drinking. Okay. And what is the difference between champagne and Prosecco? In oh, my God. We can't even go there, Jane. Because God. champagne, <laughs> you're going to have to watch Carrie's connoisseurs. You're going to have to watch, <laughs> to watch Carrie's connoisseurs. Okay. okay. I know the taste difference, but just the production. And um, hey, so, so, you know, you were just talking. Now, imagine if everybody grabbed that little few seconds of what you just said where you said he had been working there for 150,000 years. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> 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 everybody turned on you. 
Oh, you you can't, can't do your math. You all went to the same math school. They should all be in that group. People who can't count. Famous people, people can't. Can't. <laughs> Let's get, okay, that is the little elephant in the room at the moment. Okay, we'll call her Glovel from here on in. Yes. So um, Glovel, I mean, she really did kind what? of. What? What are you saying? Room. You're calling what? I couldn't hear I'm that. I'm calling her Glovel, which means oh. elephant. Okay, so the oh, elephant okay. is in the room. Unlike me, where I'm an elephant, I never forget anything. Okay, so that's why my <laughs> kids call me that. But I mean, she she really did cause a bit of a, a storm in a teacup. Yeah, because I actually find it quite funny, and I'm loving all the stuff that's coming out about it. You know, has she yeah. been, has she sort of rebutted she said anything? anything back? And not that I've seen. And honestly, South Africans are always turning on her, so I don't think it would be in her interest to. To, to say anything and just like put fuel on the fire, don't you think? What irritates me here though is all the people who still call her Charlie's Theron or Theron. Theron. Sorry, Theron. But you know, I sit there every time I hear it the on the radio, Theron. it's Theron. <laughs> but even in, but even in South Theron. Yeah, but it's not. She's Charlie's no. Theron. It's not Theron. Okay. Or, or as uh, I saw some other Afrikaans person saying, it's, oh, maybe it was Skulk Brazadene saying it's Tron, not yeah, Theron. Tron. It's yeah. Tron. You ask Tron. any poor person with the surname Thron here in South Africa. So she's Charlie Thron who failed maths at school. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Along you with you. We still love you. We and then, love you. You're beautiful. <laughs> and then somebody <laughs> went and put, I think I, I, it wasn't Gus Silver, it was one of the other kind of writers who, who put stuff out on Facebook as well. And he was going, near man Charlene. And I just went, Ooh. I think we'll find that Charlene is a princess in the in palace. Monaco. <laughs> <laughs> in the palace. <laughs> no fairies here, darling. Yeah. Anyhow, so um, I mean, that's that that has been a, a bit of a <clears throat> a little contretemps, shall we yes. say? Not yeah. a bad. Thing. It's been really funny. The lightheartedness of it has been so funny. It's it's a bit sad that some people, you know, took it like your comment of 150,000 years. And well, I just can't seriously. believe I can't believe that you're not allowed to have a sense of humour anymore. You're not allowed <laughs> to laugh at yourself. You're not allowed to exaggerate which is so important when it comes to getting your your <laughs> you have to really? 50,000 years sounds much better than 50 years yeah 50 years like so boring yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, we were talking about food and things that are good I'm, I'm just looking at this wine at the moment and, and, and that was water but Carrie and I changed it into wine by the way I don't know what this morning, this morning we, we learned how to check <laughs> I'm not going there okay but um, talking about things that are good to put in your mind I see you've got a story we, we did talk about it I think the last week or the week before about the South African, the third chef to get a mission on star. Yes, it was, it's Tina's van der Westhuizen, and I said we had an interview coming up. Yes. We've done the interview, and um, and Tina is is wonderful. He's been overseas since about 2012. Um, but the best thing is that not only is he now a Michelin star chef who carry, if you're traveling in Abu Dhabi, um, go and check it out at 66 Sushi Bar. Okay. But he um, he still says his his happy place is next to a braai with his friends and family, and um, and his his favorite way of making food is is fire and and braais. And he said, you know, that's what he loves about South African food, is the natural elements that are used to to get different tastes into food. Do you know what I mean? That's mm. probably why um, David Higgs went with the I whole thing with marble. David Higgs with has got an indoor bry yeah. marble. Yeah, I always say to yeah. him, it's just an indoor bry. But the South African boys do love to bry, don't they? It's their thing. They love it. Listen, I could sit and watch David Higgs cooking any, every day I could watch him do anything. Oh, yeah, gosh. He can cook. He's beautiful. He's mm. so beautiful. He is beautiful. In fact, who, who is he? The show. Oh, he is. Well, Jen, He's... when you're out here again, we're going to go to Marble. You're going to love it because he is just we'll yum, 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 yum. You don't very... even need to eat. We'll just sit there, drink like some nice wine mm -hmm. that Carrie tells us to drink, and we'll just watch him. Uh, he's but, a but, but, but please I'm tell sure me who he is. He's a chef. He owns marble. He owns Saint. He has yeah, the a what's it called? The tuck group. shop. The pantry. The pantry, the pantry, which is in Rosebank as well. Pantry is like a posh garage shop. Yeah, it's in a oh. garage. Oh, oh I, I think I've seen photos. Yeah. Yeah, we're okay. gonna have. To <laughs> 
but he always gets frightened whenever he sees me coming because he knows I'm just going to salivate the entire time. Not about the food, not the food, about him, about him because he's, he's delish. Anyhow, so anyway, what else have you got? I mean, we talked about that. Um, Kevin Fraser. Who's Kevin Fraser? Kevin Fraser is this brilliant comedian, a South African who's been living in Australia for 150,000 years. And, um, and he is... He is what are we going to make? We're going to pay people. <laughs> <laughs> he is um, back in South Africa for, he's actually already arrived now, um, but in December he'll be doing shows called um, The Minister of Entertainment, but it's not political at all, um, and he'll be, uh, well no, it probably is if you think of it, um, he'll be in uh, Durban, PE, uh, not PE, um, so so it's really worth going to see him and we're hoping that he doesn't get anything stolen because when he was here in Europe a couple of months ago his huge suitcase with everything in um, got stolen off a train so in Germany is that so, supposed to happen in Germany for goodness sake and they yes. yes. unfortunately like since their um you know they had a huge intake of refugees about five or six years ago and the yeah. the theft on trains has escalated i i, I don't I, I can't remember exactly your, how much but it's huge. yeah oh, talking about people appropriating things i'm a little bit annoyed about What's these happening? Capetonians who think that they can appropriate our jacarandas. Oh, no. <laughs> the pictures are like, Capetan has their own jacarandas. Now, I'm like, excuse me, moi. it's bad enough that Pretoria calls themselves the jacaranda city when we have more of them here in Joburg. Okay, now the Capetonians are trying to take it away from us as well. Uh-uh, uh-uh, slopstuck people, forget it. But you know what, the slopstuck people can keep that because half of the Johannesburg people have moved They've semigrated to Cape Town. Mm. And having just come back like 36 hours ago, it is bursting at the seams. There are a few jacarandas there. But I think with the great mobilization of money from Johannesburg down to Cape Town, I think all the burglars are going to follow them. So we're going to be able to walk on our jacaranda-lined streets freely. Free. And that's why Tally's moved back up to Joburg. Free. free. Yeah. And enjoy our jacarandas have at you, the same time. Have you seen any of the, the um, uh, Tally's Joburg diary? No. Which has started as well now. <laughs> she's, she's moved from Cape Town. Now, now ah, darling, she's, okay. moved, she's moved back to Joburg. She's back in Joburg and trying to get some work. I have been watching, as you can hear, by the way, I'm speaking. And then we got on, somebody turned around this week and said on Kate Normington's Facebook uh, feed, I didn't realize that people still spoke Kugel. It's been a long time since we did that. <laughs> All right, so one of the good things that happened, I don't know if you saw it, I'm talking about entertainment, was that um, the, the International Grammy Awards, South Africa did quite well there, didn't they, Jen? Oh, man, so proud. They did so, so well. Um, kids animation category, they won. One, it was like one of the biggest awards, and um, and I spoke to the guys. It's so exciting! I'll post some they? photos today. Who are they? Do we know um, them? Um, the it's Fundy Films who who did the production, and the show is called My Better World, which one? And it's a beautiful TV series. It goes around Africa. It's in about four different languages. And it's eight African teens kind of handling life and friendship and, and all that. Um, sorry, my cat is playing with everything on the table right now. <laughs> and, um, um, it's Fundy Films and Marn Projects. So they uh, um, in South Africa, the whole thing, it's one of the very few series where everything was done in, in Africa. Africa, mainly in oh, South Africa. Brilliant. I have to have a look and see who that is. Yeah, no, that would be lovely to see. Okay, yeah. so. Chris is the guy. Chris, I've forgotten Chris's surname right now, but Chris is, is the owner of Fundy Films. Okay, well done, Chris. Is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Whoever yeah. you are. Chris. <laughs> but um, we were talking about, okay, you've got to watch Tally. Now you're going to have to watch that as well. We're going right. to educate Carrie as to what she should be watching. Carrie. There used to be a oh, film yeah. called Educating, Educating Rita. Rita. 
with yeah. the Ju wonderful Julie Walters and with Michael Caine. Michael Caine, oh, beautiful Wasn't movie. Cool? Yeah, I yeah, that. it was a great movie. So um, we we talk about people who uh, live overseas and do well. And of course, the first person that always comes to mind is Trevor Noah. Now he's retiring, retiring, resigned from the Today Show. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, he resigned so from that. Know that. I thought yeah. what from the news in April because it was turning me into a bit of a an angry person. So yeah, you got to watch some good news on SA People. Exactly we, what I'm going to do. This we, is my we have like, new channel. We, we have kind of 80 to 90% good news, and then we put in that little 10% just to keep it real because people complained that we had our head in the sand, That's whatever that saying is. So and, tell everybody, and then we laugh a bit. And then, and then we laugh a bit at it. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what we need. And, but, um, yeah, Trevor Noah, so he finishes, I think, on the 8th of December. Oh. He's got a, some tour lined up for next year. But if you have Netflix right now, he, um, his new stand up show is called I Wish You Would. And, um, and the, and the, it's, it looks really, really funny. The, um, reviews are coming amazing. back to South Africa, is he? Um, I think, I think he is, but, <laughs> but I don't think he's moving back. No, I mean, he's, he's not, not moving, moving, he's not back, moving back, 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 but I think he's doing no. it because one of my twins is like a complete Trevor Noah nut. Okay. Um, and, and also talking about Scott Bezadenhout, I mean, he, he usually, we find him up in Rosebank sometimes having coffee by the Woolies there, and my kids will see him, and, and the one that likes comedy a lot, she's like, oh, Oh, look, 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 look. And she's completely <laughs> mad about Trevor Noah. And the first time when she saw him when she was much younger, she just turned around and said, I'm his biggest, no, he's my biggest fan. Instead of saying, I'm not <laughs> <doing that." laughs> no, no. But we did, we did manage to, thanks to Carolyn Stain, of course, she, she managed to get a signed copy to her from him. And she is, has got all of his books and she's watched everything he's ever done. I mean, Trevor Noah oh, for her awesome. is her absolute hero. Okay, so he we're, we're going to keep going. We're going to tell Carrie what she should be watching out for on television yes. as well, because there's so much wonderful South African stuff. We talk about, like, you know, we, we had yeah. last week, we had Kate Normington from Tally's Joburg Diaries uh, talking to yes. us. Yes. So we have all these wonderful things that we find out about. So Definitely my new news feed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and also, Mal, I just wanted to say that the, maybe your daughter might get lucky because uh, Trevor Noah is selling his place in... The, I think the place in New York or LA, yes, I can't remember which one. Thing, yeah. so, so he might be planning on spending more time in South Africa. You never know. Um, but I think he also just wants to travel. Yeah. And so does she. So, yeah, we should see what we can do. Um, <laughs> but, but Carrie, the, yeah, so I think Trevor Noah's show is definitely worth a watch. Mm -hmm. um, Tully's Joburg Diary. Um, then there's Tully's Joburg Diary? On, on Showmax. Yeah. Okay. And it's, I think there's two episodes every Friday. So it's, you're in the middle of it right now. And, and if you have Showmax in South Africa, then you can also watch The White Lotus, which is I international. I watched it like that. It's Ooh, so dark. dark. I yeah, which one are you movie. watching? Are you watching the Hawaii number one or number two? Hawaii I or number Sicily? One, I, didn't, I hadn't watched number one yet. So I started, I watched three or four of number one for the first series. But oh, it's so dark. I and love there's it. This, Funny music, yeah. and I keep on expecting. I'm sort of anticipating something very oh, deeply oh. weird to go down any minute now. I'm sure they does. I think that we all got um, inured with your weird music when we used to watch Twin Peaks. Oh my god! Because remember, yes. Twin yeah. Peaks would be certain music for certain yeah. people. But no, White Lotus is great fun. I mean, I would. I'm so it's fun. There's not going to be any dark, ghastly murder or. No, I don't know. Okay. There might be. Who knows? Anything nothing you can't it. handle. There'll be nothing you can't handle. I, I mean, just look at Midsummer. Imagine living in Midsummer. <laughs> I know. That, was so, that was so cruel. You know, have you seen how hectic some of those things are? Even if you think about some of the nursery rhymes that we used yes, to have. Yes, I know. As, the world is a thing. Midsummer Murders is very gruesome. I know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, but I won't watch Dexter, for instance. All right, so I think we, we could stay here no. talking all day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. What we need to do, first of all, is find out what do you have coming up on sapeople.com next week? What is the big story? Um, just some beautiful, beautiful, beautiful photos. I don't know if you remember, but back in 2018, um, the South African expat in the Ukraine, who's now left the Ukraine but still helps so much, mm -hmm. um, helped, along with Turkish Airlines, to take four lions that had been in a zoo and were so depressed, take those four lions to South Africa and, um, and to Krakakama uh, Game Park near Kibaka. Um, 
And now we have got photos from Alicia Cantor, you know, and she's also the one who runs Africa. This is why I live here. Mm -hmm. um, so she's amazing and she's got this game park and she has got the lions and they have just thrived like oh, you can't brilliant. believe it it's the most beautiful heartwarming photos of lions i've ever seen oh so my child um saw her first lion kill the other day because she's she's training as a, a field guide mm. and they were going around and there was this old male lion who was oh, as no, scrawny so as anything no, and, but he did. He managed to, on his own, he went and he caught a zebra. And I mean, he was like, he really knew, you looked at him and he knew that he needed a meal. He's on a game farm. It's not like in some really horrible place. And they're out there doing their thing. But I'm just so glad for her that she got to see that. Yeah. Um, but to, to finish off with the lions, you have to eat, so do we. And Jenny Baxter sends yeah. me a WhatsApp this week. <laughs> With a picture of somebody on, uh, on on the page, obviously he went and put up a cover picture oh. of Jamie Oliver's new book, Veg. <laughs> and he's like, Nia man, he he wird nix von Bekleini. So Jamie Baxter sends me the saying, I don't understand what is so funny about this because Jamie Baxter has forgotten her Afrikaans. I never knew that. Right. And it's right. <laughs> okay. so when? How do you even pronounce it? Veg. Veg. Even my children know. Fech. You, you fech met iemand. Mm. Fech. I've never heard that word in my life. But that's but maybe because in the KZN region, darling. Not like yeah. here where we get down and dirty ah. and fech met ala mensa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did, you see, did you see I did, after I checked with you, I posted it on Facebook, but I did say you have to be one of the 44 to understand this. Yes. <laughs> and, and, that, and that I had had to phone a friend. <laughs> I've always somebody phone a friend. You, yeah. never, you always know if you're in a trouble, even my brother, Bye, he Mal. picks up the phone and he says, Mel, I need to know this. And I'm like, yeah. what am I walking inside Crandis Land? You I'm are a fact mind. check. Fact check, Mel. I'm a fact checker. There we go. So, Carrie, thank you yeah. very much. Um, we're going to be putting it out everywhere when your you. podcast and your YouTube is up and running and your first yes. one's happening. Jen, we'll give it to you as well so you can share it with all the people from sapeople.com as well. Put it up on Facebook. I think it's quite exciting. We've Maybe got we'll do a seasonal one. Wine tasting with us three girls. Yeah, what we'll to have to send her some. Summer, spring, autumn, winter. But we've got to get some wine to her. Oh, that's easy. That's easy. She'll send you some wine, Jen, for that's Christmas. Okay. I'll sit here with my cat and drink. <laughs> we'll just get over the cat. <laughs> Throw it <laughs> over the cat. All right, so for those of you who um, really enjoy sharing good news, please don't forget, of course, you can get onto the sapeople.com website or, of course, just onto Facebook. Go and post your pictures. Let Jenny know about any fabulous stories that you've got coming up because, of course, we love to hear the good news and the views of South Africa at home and everywhere else in the world. And we'll catch up with you again next week. Until then, take good care and bye-bye, Jenny. See you soon. Bye.